Welcome back to Star Game Studios RPG UE5 tutorial series. We have a good one today. We are now into the lightsaber hit detection phase. We will set up a trace system on the lightsaber and destroy our enemy. This will be a long one. Let's get into it. I have a few new items for you to download. Just go to my download page and get download package number four. There is a link in the description. Also, we need to install a free asset from the Unreal Marketplace. Open the Epic Games Launcher and click on Marketplace. Search for Realistic Starter VFX Pack Volume 2. Go ahead and get it. It's free. Add it to the project. There is a particle effect we will be using in this tutorial. We may use more of them in future tutorials. The first part of this video is building the trace system. We will set up a capsule on the lightsaber to detect when it hits an object. Open the project and go to the BPC Saber Attacks event graph. Under the Stop Combo event, create a new custom event. Name this Start Saber Trace. Create another custom event and name it Saber Trace Loop. Pull from the output delegate of the event and create a set timer by event node. Remove the execute wire and reconnect it to the start Saber Trace event. Be sure to enable looping and set the time to 0 .001. This setup repeats the tracing event. Next, find the sphere trace by channel. We will build a capsule on the saber's blade rather than using the line trace. Let's make a radius of around 10. Set the draw debug type to four duration. This draws the capsule on the screen to see what is happening while we work on the project. We have to determine the start and end locations of the trace, which are the base and tip of the blade. Compile and save. Open the lightsaber blueprint and go to the viewport. Click on the lightsaber blade and set the Z scale to one in the details panel. This is temporary so we can see the blade while making points for our trace capsule. Open the X2 blueprint and go to its viewport. Highlight the lightsaber in the components tab and add an arrow. Name the arrow saber tip point. Move the end of the arrow to the tip of the saber. This will mark a point we will use for the end of the trace capsule. Now, add another arrow to the lightsaber. Name this arrow Saber Base Point. Move this arrow to the top of the lightsaber hilt. This will be our start position. Don't worry about the rotation of the arrow. It doesn't make a difference. Compile and save. Return to the lightsaber blueprint and set the Z scale back to zero. Back in the Saber Attacks blueprint, before we can determine the location of the lightsaber points we just added, we need a reference to the entire blueprint of the X2. Go to the Event Begin Play, right click the As BP X2, Promote to Variable, connect this to the other nodes. Name it X2BP. Now, we can reference the X2 blueprint and get the Saber base point. We can find the exact location of the point by getting the world location. Now do the same for the Saber tip point. Connect them to the start and end, respectively. 
By the way, it doesn't matter which one you plug in first. You can start with either one. Let's expand the sphere trace by channel and set the draw time to 0 0.2. To see how it looks, we need to call the saber trace by temporarily adding it to the saber attack. Compile, save, and run the game. As you can see, a trace capsule is around the lightsaber blade. When you attack, the trace follows the blade path. When the trace hits something, it will turn green, as you can see. Great! Now, we can delete the call from the attack function and set up some notifies to handle the job. Go to your Core Blueprints folder and create a new Blueprint class. In all classes, search for Anim Notify. This time, we need a state. Name this BP underscore Saber Trace. Open the blueprint and in the function tab, we want to choose receive notify begin. We need to get the mesh component from the node by finding get owner. We can then do a cast to BPX2 Get the BPC Saber Attacks system and find the Start Saber Trace. Plug it into the Return node. Before we create the notify end, we need to make the stop saber trace event. Go back to the saber attacks blueprint and create a new custom event. Name it stop saber trace. This event will stop the timer for the trace. We need to create a variable to stop the loop. So go to the timer and promote it to a variable. Name it Saber Trace Loop. Now get the Saber Trace Loop and find the Clear and Invalidate Timer by Handle node. This will stop the timer when the lightsaber reaches the end of the attack. Now we can return to BP Saber Trace and create the received notify end. To make it faster, we can open the notify begin and copy these three nodes. Paste them in the notify end and connect them. Add the Stop Saber Trace node and connect. Compile and save. You will see the difference between the normal notify and the notify state. Open the core animations folder and find the Saber Attack 1 montage. Open it up. Pause the animation and create a new Notify track.
You can name your tracks if you want. Scrub the timeline until you find where the saber might come in. First contact with something. I stopped at about frame 16. In your saber trace track, add a notify state BP saber trace at frame 16. You can see the difference between a notify and a state. The state has two nodes one on each end. We only need to place one state per animation. Scrub the timeline again until you find the end of the attack. I stopped at 23. Pull the end node to frame 23 on the timeline. This blue ribbon area is where the saber can hit other objects. So between frame 16 and frame 23, the lightsaber can damage the enemy. Save and close. Now, let's do the same thing for the other attack montage. Open it up and pause the animation. Create your new notify track. Name the tracks if you like. In this animation, I use the same frames as the attack notifies. 18 for the start and 31 for the end. Set your notify state and then save and close. I noticed I made a mistake. I have a multi-sphere channel. I need to change this to a regular one. Don't forget to turn on the draw debug type, set the radius to 10, and draw time to 0.2. Okay, much better. Now for the good stuff. We will damage the enemy with the lightsaber. First, I want to change the radius to 5. This will give us a tighter capsule that better represents the saber blade. Check it out. Much better. Okay, in the Saber Attacks blueprint, drag off the return value in the Trace By channel. Create a branch node. This will only allow us to apply damage if we detect an enemy. From the Out Hit, create a Break Hit Result node. Extend the node so we can see all of the parameter pins. These parameters are all the hit results from the sphere trace. We must create a tag for anything we want to be hittable. But first, we need to have an enemy to hit. Go to your core blueprint folder and create a new blueprint class of type character. Name it whatever you want, such as BP underscore enemy one. Open the blueprint file. Go to the viewport and highlight the character mesh component. Choose a skeletal mesh asset in the details panel, such as SKM Manny. Set the transform Z location to minus 89 and the rotation Z to minus 90. Choose the ABP Manny as the NM class. In the Details panel, search for Tags. Add a new array element to the Actor Tags and name it Damageable.
Search for collision and tick the simulate generates hit events. Tick the generate overlap events. Set the collision presets to custom. In the collision enabled dropdown, choose collision enabled query and physics. The object type will be physics body. One last thing to do is tick the camera ignore. We don't want to hit the camera if it comes in close during an attack. Go back into the Saber attack system and from the hit actor pin, get the actor has tag function. Set the tag to the damageable label we made in the enemy blueprint. We need to add another branch node to send the return value as the condition. Connect a do once node to the true pin on the branch node. We only want to damage the enemy once per hit. From the hit actor pin again, find the apply damage node. Connect the execute pin to the do once node. Add a delay node to the damage node and set it to 0.5. This is just a short delay before the damage is reset by the do once node. Go to the event graph for the enemy and make an event any damage. Add a print string and type anything you want in. Compile and save. One thing I forgot to do before we can exert damage is to go back into the saber attacks and add some base damage. I'll add 10. Drop an enemy blueprint into the game and run it. Attack the enemy and see what happens. Your print string message is printed on the screen. At least we know it works. Since this video is so long, I will end it here. A shorter video will follow where we will kill the enemy and add a cool lightsaber hit particle effect. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this valuable and enjoyable. Please like and subscribe to see more upcoming videos in this series, as well as other useful content.